You are listening to the Soul Strategies Podcast with your hosts, Z Cohen Sanchez and Chris Abramson. If you're running for office or thinking about it, you're in the right place. We hope you enjoy the latest episode and thanks for tuning in. Hi, Facebook and later Instagram. Z here from Soul Strategies. Chris. And as always, we're going to wait just a couple of seconds to get folks on. We're going to be talking today about urgency and the importance of urgency. It is so, so, so important. About oh, urgency. sorry. I need to share this. I think on it's my page. really important. Um, just to acknowledge, like, we're outside right now. That's so cool. Um, it, we have breathable air. Um, that's a really the big small accomplishment. Victories. Um, yeah, so just really want to take a second to just be happy about the fact that there's clean air and we can breathe it. And uh, yeah, um, and that's a really good segue into why is it so urgent um, to be urgent in the way that you run your campaign, express urgency in the issues and causes that you stand behind, and also uh, how your outreach and forward facing message gets delivered even at the bottom level why it's so what does urgency look like there um and obviously it's really urgent that you get involved with soul strategies and we really get the uh, ability to go inside and really in depth with uh all of the things that we're going to talk about in these lives and make it something that you can use on a daily basis totally no i think that that's really true and so when we talk about urgency we're talking about so the first the first point of urgency that we really want to stress is why mm. sorry it's hard to even know where to start. Like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I want to be hopeful. So we have a pandemic happening globally right now and a lack of healthcare that's going to be able to make sure that people are okay. Um, that is stressing everyone out. And I know that, you know, we could have progress, like tangible results from candidates, nonprofits and community leaders who could actually work towards better healthcare and better support for people that are that in, in the next global pandemic or even hopefully during the end of this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have, you know, here wild super fires going on in Oregon that are making the air unbreathable for normal folks. Um, and that's a part of a, gl a global issue as well. Um, you know, we have environmental issues threatening everybody. And instead of making the changes that we're supposed to, our elected officials and a lot of our you know, corporations, especially in the United States, are pushing for even less emission controls and even more ability to pollute. So, uh, you know, I can't, I can't think of a more urgent time than there ever has been ever in human history, as a matter of fact, to deal with the issues that need to, that the government needs to work on, yeah. and that the people need to work on. It's overwhelming for sure. I think that. But what is not overwhelming about it is that it's doable. So I think that that's something where a lot of people come stuck. A lot of people sort of get into this mindset of there's so much going on. There's, the, I mean, like the environment is burning. We have, you know, unlimited amount of spending in in government right now and for uh, for campaigns and like what can I do I mean if I don't have the experience really what can I do and the answer is that you can do a lot and even if you don't have the experience in fact I was just having a conversation today about experience with somebody mm -hmm. and um, I just finished for for anybody I, I don't like to sort of plug things right but like if anybody has some time to go look at the master class on the master class app by uh, David Axelrod and Carl Rove for some people uh, that are following us you will know that we are progressive so I'm not a fan of Carl Rove but what I found really interesting was that you know Carl Rove and David Axelrod David who was um, on Obama's 2008 campaign and then continued with him throughout and has done a wild amount of campaigns honestly is a Democrat and so like they're like really good friends like this Republican and this Democrat they're really good friends they've worked on campaigns together for like 30 35 years um, and one of the things that they were talking about was experience and how being a new comer without experience if you have the right messaging and you have the right urgency what is exponentially better than just being a regular run-of-the-mill candidate and they were comparing this with um, Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign um, and they were also comparing it with a couple of governor campaigns that were really interesting where these newcomers sort of swept up Obama's 2008 campaign where that was literally what he ran on I mean Obama was a senator for four years before he ran in 
terms of the government, I mean, that's a literal baby, right? Like if you're coming, if you're running for the president after four years, um, you do not have uh, experience on your side. You do not have experience to lean on. And so, yeah, what I found really interesting was that when I was having this conversation with somebody, they were like, well, I'm really inexperienced and the person I'd be running against has a PhD. And I'm like, so? <laughs> I mean, that's a great thing, right? Um, and it all boils back down to urgency and why people are wanting, what people want to see. I mean, Trump wouldn't have won the election if, you know, if people didn't want to see newcomers, right? Like, there's yeah. a reason why. They literally picked the most new person that they possibly could possibly could I mean right. somebody that had no political experience and not just no political experience but was totally outside the entire political realm right. so yeah the idea of per personality basically literally yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what, like yep, yep, yep. so um, and it, it's funny because it, you you know after like he's been in office for so like for four years now now it's it, it's even hard to believe that this is a reality but it is so um, and that's really what people want so this can really be used to your advantage uh, in, in so many ways. And by the way, if you're joining us right now, uh, let us know who you are, where you're from, um, if you're thinking about running for office, what you're thinking about running for. We're literally, we do these lives to be able to answer any questions that you guys have completely for free, just as a resource, so. Yeah. Share the stream too, and uh, go follow Soul Strategies page. That way you can know when we're going live and when we're talking about stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think we're going to move on to, so we're talking about why is it urgent for people to campaign? Why is it urgent for people to get involved in their local political machine? Why is it important for nonprofits to do what they do and be successful financially? Uh, why is it urgent for you to, to get involved? Um, and uh, the next part is, you know, what does an urgent campaign look like? How do we express that, you know, say you're running for a congressional seat or you know, you're running for a city commissioner seat, city council seat, whatever it may be. Um, you know, how do you express to the people that are doing your volunteer coordinating that are um, in your office every day that you're that you're rubbing shoulders with the urgency of the issues that you stand behind? Yeah, I think that that's yeah, that's that's really what it is, and I think that so. The idea of urgency in your messaging and how important that is, is just something that we can't sp express enough and why so many campaigns essentially die because they don't, they don't have the sense of urgency in their messaging. And this is actually something that ties in really, really tightly with fundraising too. So the reason why a lot of people don't fundraise as effectively as they could is because they don't have a sense of urgency in their ask. And so say that you're giving somebody a call and you're talking to them about the climate, right? I mean, we have been told for the last 20 years that this is it, really, that that's, right? I mean, yeah, it's it, it has been known, right? So you know, when you're talking to somebody about climate change, you're trying to, for example, fundraise for an organization around climate change, and you don't have that urgency in your tone, in your messaging, in your ask, people are not going to trust you, and they're going to just move on. I mean, that's yeah. the harsh reality of it. Absolutely. But we're not here to be, you know, we want we want you to make money. We don't want you to, you know, we don't, it's not about being friends all the time. It's just about helping you guys make money. And that's the reality of it, is mm -hmm. that a lot of people are just gonna simply tune out. And so that's really what it is. Urgency expresses that people around you need to do the thing now. It's like when I'm office directing and helping to manage campaigns, a lot of the way that I express that to the people around me is really by like informing them of the issue and making sure that they're aware of what kind of things that they're standing behind. And I think that part's really important. If someone doesn't fully understand like what climate change looks like, if they don't fully understand what a lack of healthcare looks like, then they're not going to be able to comprehend like why is it so important for them to work so hard and to do their job with urgency and, and walk that way. And the other part is uh, building a unity of direction. So I've seen a lot of campaigns where roles and realms from different people in the office are kind of overlapped. People are working very hard, but not getting a lot done. Have you ever seen that before? Oh my God. And by the way, this is a great time to say, a lot of people have a real sort of, um, not, not an understanding of what urgency even is. Urgency is not being frantic. There's sure. a really big difference. Sure. And I feel like a lot of campaigns that we've stepped in individually and that 
and, and together yeah. have sort of had this idea, well, we have urgency because look at all these things happening. Right. But there's no, there's no, um, there's no results right. to, to what, there, there's no data to show that what they're doing is actually effective. And this is sort of the really big issue is that that's the difference between being urgent and being frantic, right? Urgent, yeah. great. Frantic, going to absolutely do nothing for you. Yeah. In fact, frantic is going to come off as desperate. Yeah. That's really what it's going to come off as. Absolutely. Especially in fundraising. I mean, in campaign messaging too, but yeah. particularly in fundraising. And yeah. people can sense you being frantic. It is just like... I can tell as soon as somebody's called me, I, I get the sense that they are uneasy, that they're frantic, that they like need this to happen. And it's a very different feeling than when I get a call from somebody, there's just a sense of urgency yeah. and that they need me to join their team. And that's really what it's about. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Lo love that breakdown. That's so, I, it's just so common. Yeah. Literally most, in most campaigns I've ever been in, there's an element of that. and. I think really no matter how good you are, you're battling actual time. You know, when you look at like a congressional run, it's like from the time you decide that you're going to do that and you file, you know, your, as your, your political committee and, you know, take that step. Or if you're running a petition initiative, the minute you become an initiative petition committee and, and really claim that idea, the amount of time from that day to the day that you pass the law, get, you know, all the votes are counted, whatever it may be, it's incredibly short. Yeah. And it often makes pretty much everyone frantic. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't have to actually be that way. No. Um, you can stress urgency in the people around you, motivate your staff around the issues that you work on that are actually urgent and create a lockstep messaging. Um, again, I always bring this up, how good the right is at doing that. Oh yeah. Um, they hammer home the same points, they march in lockstep. Um, I've you know been privy to a lot of their uh, operations and how they work and it's it's uh, th their campaigns are usually completely just top-down yeah they're funded by a major source uh, benefactor candidacies think tanks trusts uh, that money goes towards you know paying a boss to hire and fire people it's literally like a gas station or Starbucks or something yeah um, yep everybody marches in lockstep and I think that progressive candidates should really be doing that too yeah. uh, there's there's nothing wrong with using what's what works and uh, it'll stress that urgency uh, the next part that we we're going to talk about is is the is the is the next step down, right? And and how uh, on the from the macro to the micro, like how uh, do your canvassers and your front facing outreach and how do your calls look like when? How do you stress urgency to someone when you're talking to them? Right, exactly. As opposed to look, looking frantic or not urgent enough. Yeah, no, I think that that's a really good point. And I, you know, it, this is something that really you know, you're what you're doing when you're setting up a campaign is you're setting up a culture. Right? Yes. So if you have the sense of being frantic and not urgent, if you have not worked on your messaging to make it urgent but not frantic, people in your campaign, particularly your volunteers and your staff, are going to feel that and it's going to be, it's going to become an internal, what was an internal issue is going to become an external issue really, really quickly. Yeah. I don't want to look at anybody, <laughs> Ted Wheeler. Sure. <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, yeah. how many campaign managers has he gone through just this cycle? Sure. I mean, you know, we got to be real, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I totally. don't think Ted Wheeler was going to come to us for help anyway, but I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, you can sense how frantic it is, that campaign, and how yeah. unstable it is. And, and you can see it. And you can see it through volunteering. You can see it through the staff. You can see it through their turnover of staff. Um, and so that's the last thing that you want to come to is you never want to get to yourself to a point in a campaign where people can sense your your franticness. Yeah, essentially, I think what it is absolutely. And one of the ways that I do that little kind of tip and trick here, especially in motivating my own language, but I really try to be a like leader in the sense of really inspiring the other people around me in a campaign to really focus on the work itself and the skills that you're doing. Because if you walk out into the street every day and you're like, I'm gonna fight climate change, or I'm going to make sure that ICE doesn't have children in cages anymore. I'm going to make sure we all have healthcare and my grandma can be okay. If you were walking into the streets thinking about those things, every person that's telling you no, you're having to take that issue on as if you, as if that thing's never gonna happen. And that's gonna make you look frantic eventually. Like, yeah. you don't really need to be out there focused about winning the vote or solving the problem, those things will happen in time. You should be confident about those things happening. Um, you know, that's how you win. 
and really focus on the skills of doing outreach and talking to people. Yeah. Weaving a problem solution victory narrative, emotionally engaging them, accessing that limbic system, making it a, you know, emotional moment where they can empathize with the issue itself and, and the urgency itself rather than a neocortex decision about, you know, these facts make sense. Um, you're so, taking them on a journey, right? Yeah. I mean, and that, yeah. and it shouldn't just be when, when you're talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, when you're having these conversations, especially in the beginning, when you're a candidate that's like doing your call time, maybe you're just having conversations with friends and family, sort of scoping out if this is a good idea, whatever it might be, you, those conversations are a journey. You're taking them from the beginning to the end of something, right? And you have a great responsibility in that. It's the same thing with your campaign as a journey for your entire campaign, right? Like you don't want to start with the most urgent message right now today when your election's in two years, right? You want to have a build up. Yeah. Yes, you want your messaging to be consistent. That is absolutely, I cannot stress that enough. You have to have consistent messaging. But if you continue on the same, you know, say that your, you know, say that your key messaging is like people over profits or something like that, right? Like that's like your key messaging. That is great key messaging, but if you just say people over profits 800 million times between today and two years from your election, sure. um, until election day, you're not going to get, a, you're not going to have a winning campaign because right. people, people want you to take them on that journey. That's yeah. what I think it really, really comes down to is yeah. you have to take them on the arc. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can stress urgency. Uh, I think really active listening too is such a huge part of the you know, we're talking about a very zen thing, like how to how to really inspire someone to do something right now and to take it so seriously that they're going to answer their phone and talk to you and be a contributor and be a part of your campaign now and help you do these things. Um, you know, but at the same time, do it in a way that looks completely nonplussed. And that's a very zen kind of attitude. Um, really, if you focus on the, the end result, you know, I, I feel like you, you're going to be dis disappointed a lot of the time. If you learn to just love the work of doing outreach, which we can totally teach you how to do, right. um, it's very fun and, and awesome and beautiful engaging with the public and engaging with the community, representing them uh, genuinely and making the world a better place. These are all really good things that feel really good. For a lot of people, they don't. And um, it's really just a matter of mindset and perspective. Um, if you're focused on, was my pitch good? Did my ask sound good? Did I get in touch? Did I do the skills that my trainer taught me, did I do outreach like outreach should be done, then you know you can fine tune those things and walk away each day with a lesson about how you did better or worse that day and start to be better all the time. Just like an athlete, just like to anybody that was wanting to be really good at something. It's a learned skill. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always find it really funny because sometimes I'll get like somebody that reaches out to me and they'll say, oh, I don't need training. I just, give me, give me a list. <laughs> and I always say like, Wait, what? Like, I mean, do you think that you could just like call this list and like solicit thousands of dollars? I mean, that's not the way it works, right? Yeah. And the more, and it, it's 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 a really dangerous way to think because when you get into that mindset of, oh, this is not a learned skill. This is not something that I need to to learn how to do. This is just something that I naturally have. I mean, if that was the case, everybody in this country would raise thousands and thousands of dollars right. in every election, and they don't. Right. Some people do, and some people don't. Yeah. And what we're trying to express to you is we can teach you how people actually do it right um, and so really sort of think about that uh, think about if you are going to purchase data of folks that have donated to people like you before have donated to similar candidates have donated to similar organizations and you call them and you don't know how to pitch them you don't know how to have that art conversation you don't know what you're doing essentially. How to stress the urgency. Yeah, you are not only wasting your time, but you're wasting valuable data that you, where you could be getting Oof. money. So, yeah, and that's the worst. Don't burn data. Mm -hmm. Data's not, we don't want to burn data. So, it's bad for all progressives. It totally is. And yeah. people remember it. People remember the conversation. So, you don't just have a duty to your own campaign, you have a duty to all the other progressives out there. And that's why we get so frustrated when we see progressives run not legitimate campaigns because we we want you know we're in this together Bernie Sanders said we're in this together and I truly from the bottom of my heart I believe that mm -hmm. and so when I see a progressive running a 
not professional campaign and not strategic campaign it hurts me because yeah. i'm like you're on my team yeah but you're not doing what you need to do to be successful and sure. as i said this is not something that you know there isn't a million ways to do this there's just not there are certain ways to do this and if you follow things in a certain way you're going to achieve results and if you don't do that you're not and so we can tell if a campaign is going to fail usually two years in advance yeah for the most part oh definitely i mean sometimes they come out like i actually no i mean i've seen like maybe two campaigns where i had a i would say like a wrong judgment on and and but but other than that and i mean those two campaigns were really sort of i mean they were out there they were not like traditional campaigns right so then i'll um, do those myself yeah and actually neither of them won but, but they got very close <laughs> um so you know i think that just having the understanding that you know we don't know everything and um and it takes a lot of years of experience and a lot of failure and i think that failure is really something as all strategies that we don't see necessarily as a bad thing if you if you're a person that has failed a lot in the past we see that as an opportunity because you're the type of person that is willing to give it a shot and a lot yeah. of people are not willing to do that so if you mm -hmm. have run five failed campaigns that tells me that and then you come to us and you want to run a legitimate campaign what that tells me is that you're probably going to be a really coachable person because sure. you've made a decision to give something a try that you didn't have experience at and that's a really valuable amazing thing to do and it didn't work out and now you need help yeah and so it's that those are the campaign the people not necessarily the campaigns but the people that really excite me um, that contact us because I know that they have a shot of really doing something incredible so this is the urgency mm -hmm. this is it I mean really I mean we talk about this quite a lot but you know I've, I've been talking to some folks this week who were thinking about running in 2024 and I was like well I don't know if we're gonna have a habitable country in 2024 right. so normally I you know back in 2016 I was thinking about the 2020 election I don't even know what 2024 looks like to be honest and so um, really sort of taking that in and thinking to yourself what is more important in your life right now that is more important than you making this attempt to run for office and most of the time I can't think of anything unless like you have like some tragic thing happening in your life where like you just literally can't do it I mean there's really like school work all of these things seem pretty frivolous when we have such destruction happening right now and by the way you do not need to quit your job to run for office sure so that is something that we should continue to stress that most candidates keep their jobs throughout their entire run and that's totally fine one um, of my best mentors um it just really this is so awesome that i remembered this just now one of my best mentors told me about urgency and how to deliver that message uh basically we were having a very long talk about environmental destruction and at the end i was like wow we just have no time and I was discussing whether or not I should go back to school or continue canvassing every day. And uh, he was like, well, you know, you could go to school and you could become like an attorney and then you can use that power as an attorney to like save the environment. And you know, that's valuable. So you may take that route. Um, but you know, you could also fundraise right now and you know, put money in the hands of 10 attorneys today that are gonna be able to fight right now. What is with everybody wanting to go to law school to run for office? Is that like yeah. a yeah? Is that a know. new thing, or no, is, a, is that just sense. like something? I mean, is that like the funnel? I, I mean, think we I definitely guess... need more political scientists um, yeah. and people who study the game because it's uh, it's unfortunate when a lot of attorneys who know a lot about law are motivated to make more law happen rather than uh, you know justice or. So yeah. I see that a lot. No, I think that that's really real. But it's just sort of interesting that people see like a law degree as a funnel into politics sure. when it just shouldn't be that way. It really should. It could be both. Somebody yeah. could be working on their law degree and also, you know, running for office and, and right. doing these things together. And like, and that's noble if you want to get your law degree and that's great. But like the fact like I've heard people say, well, I should go to law school so I can run for office. And I'm like, I don't see that that connection there right um, I do, I really don't I think that you know some of the best candidates we've ever seen are mothers are sure. nurses are yeah. people in the community are community activists are people that are going out showing up to these protests people that show up really um, and that's you know if you have a law degree I mean great I, you know those things are all awesome but that is not a requirement of you running not at all. yeah
should never be seen that way because otherwise all we'll have is just a whole bunch of attorneys right <laughs> kind of the way it is yeah. which i mean might be cool but probably not right. <laughs> so the final thing here and i think you know we'll, we'll wrap up on just a recap it's extremely critical it might be the most crucial time we've ever had in human existence to get involved in our communities to build the nonprofits that will change the world to run for the candidate the candidacies and seats that will give us the power to change the laws and enact things that need to happen that will change the world it's vitally vitally critic critical right now um, could never be more important how do we stress that to our our campaign and how do we become you know really zen in our office and in our campaign as throughout our messaging throughout um, you know our daily lives instead of frantic uh, then we talked a little bit about how urgency looks like at the fundraising level and you know what at the bottom level at your forward-facing outreach as you're doing your calls as your canvassers and volunteers are out there talking to people how are they stressing urgency and the final part is really that it's very urgent that you get involved with us if you're thinking about running, if you have a nonprofit that's been doing, uh, you know, work in the community, if you're just a community leader and you're thinking about running a side project or campaign, we can help you to get the fundraising off the ground, to craft your messaging, to get your social media presence up, to do a lot of the things that you're gonna be able to need to do to win, we can help you win. Um, and if we're gonna solve a lot of these problems, we're gonna need candidates that are gonna do the, do the job right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need nonprofits that are working really hard and, and overtime right now. Uh, we can help make a lot of that more expedient. Um, and yeah, that's just the benefit of working with people who've studied the science on how to do fundraising, how to do outreach, how to do call time, how to structure things, how to set things up correctly. Um, you're going to be able to accomplish more in a smaller amount of time. They asked Abraham Lincoln if you had to cut down a tree, how would you do it? And he said, I would spend eight hours sharpening the saw and then one hour cutting down the tree. I like that. Uh, and, and that's, uh, I, I always love that too. It's just like. But that's so true. Because if you don't ask for help, you're not going to get far. You're not, you're not going, you're not going to break break the you're, you're not going to be able to break in the way that you need to break in as a new candidate and so all you're going to end up doing is stressing yourself out wasting time losing sleep getting people involved and you don't know how to get them involved and keep them involved and you don't really understand your messaging you don't understand how to fundraise and all that's going to do is it's going to make you tired it's going to make you sick and you're gonna end up quitting. And that's the last thing that we wanna do because if you have the courage to actually run, if you are that courageous, then you're the type of person that we wanna have a seat. Really, that's what it comes down to. I mean, that's why we do this is, you know, there's a ton of people out there that are candidates uh, that go into this blindly and a lot of them lose. The majority of them lose. And so what we're doing is we're giving folks the opportunity to say, hey, you can do this, yes, like go in as a newcomer, but do it in a way that's strategic and do it in a way that's correct. Because otherwise, as I said, all you're gonna do is end up burning yourself out. Yeah. And that's not the way we want. Absolutely not. And we think that you can do it, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you're watching Absolutely. this, you have taken you have taken the step in the right direction to be able yeah. to to do this. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we talk a lot about mindset and about showing up and about the importance of these things and the fact that you're on this live, you showed up, you're thinking about this. You're in the beginning stages of thinking about something really great. And right. let me just say that every candidate that has ever just been in your situation, right, has had the same thought process happen, right? Like Obama didn't just wake up one day and become Obama. Like, yeah. although that would have been a really cool story, yeah. but it didn't happen. Right. Um, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that didn't happen either. I mean, these were all regular everyday people that got a lot of help. Um, and so don't think that you need to do it alone. That's, that's what I think it is. Yeah, you should get in touch with us. Send us a message to our page. Send us an email at info at soul-strategies.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Soul Strategies. One of the greatest things about our social media platform is that our inbox is a place for you to ask questions. We are not going to charge you for that. That is something that we go live and we have social media platforms to be able to do that. Most I don't like to call us a consulting agency. I like to call us a political organization. But most quote unquote consulting agencies or they, they do not have that option. You need to pay them $200, $300 an hour right. to be able to ask them any type of question. We don't want to be inaccessible to people like, like you guys. We don't want to be inaccessible to everyday working class people. So please take advantage of the opportunity. If you are thinking about a seat and you know you 
you don't really know if it is an appropriate seat for you to run for. You don't know if it's a winnable seat. You don't know um, what the guidelines are for fundraising. Any of that sort of thing, just send us a message and somebody on staff will get back to you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks cool. for tuning in today. And yeah. Uh, we'll see you again on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. at 7 p.m. Tuesday at 7 p.m. So that's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, I can't stress enough how urgent it is and important for you to tune in. Awesome. Have yeah. a good night.